Hey, uh, just so you guys know, there's like, uh, you know, gore and violence against animals and shit in this game, and you know, people get shot or whatever. So if that's a problem, holy shit, an anvil. Hunt Showdown, the first game brave enough to expose just how fucking awful it is to live in the American South. Welcome to beautiful and muggy Louisiana, a state so depleted and depressing outside of New Orleans that it was the primary inspiration for the Fallout series of post-apocalyptic walking forward games. Hunt Showdown realistically depicts the state as a zombie-infested wasteland full of scum-ridden stillwater swamps and cutthroat bandits all vying for the supremacy of a pork processing plant. That's you. And it's fucking awesome. Hunt Showdown Showdown is an oasis of interesting gameplay in a landscape filled with slow, aim down sights, assault rifle, masturbation simulators. It's not a super fast arena shooter, sadly. In fact, it's extremely slow and still has many of the mechanics that make up the vast majority of currently existing shooters. Aim down sights, inaccurate hip fire, sprinting, the works. But it has a few unique differentiators that make it extremely fun to play for me. However, I'm only going to tell you about one of them so that I can make multiple videos. <laughs> The topic we'll be talking about today is Hunt Showdown's weapon design and combat. In a world of automatic 30 round tracking guns that kill in 1.3 seconds, Hunt Showdown is different. The game is filled with single shot, manual action, slow guns that focus much more heavily on burst damage than on accurate automatic fire. The game takes place in 18 something or another, before the Maxim gun ruined the fun of shooting other humans for everyone, and the game is therefore filled with bolt, lever, or single action guns that require manual cycling after every shot. Not every Every gun is like this, but a good majority of them are. Wait, no, 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 cut the footage, cut the footage. Hunt Showdown is not about sprinting around, seeing a target, jumping, and then aiming and shooting at your target for a second and seeing who dies first. Hunt is a slower, methodical game about making your shots count and taking fewer of them while trying desperately to not get shot yourself. Like I said, it's about burst damage. Slow, particular burst damage, where opportunities to shoot are few and ammunition and rate of fire are scarce, because the government of Baton Rouge can't afford public transportation or bullets. I hate to bring this game up because it has my soul by its ass, but it reminds me a lot of Team Fortress 2. Alright, that's enough. A game where most characters focus on weapons that have low magazine sizes and are single-shot, semi-automatic semi -automatic. guns that have to reload a lot. Much like Hunt, Team Fortress 2 is based around taking individual shots and making sure you hit them since you only have four or six or so to take, resulting in a kind of shooting that is relatively unique. There's less tracking, and each shot has to do something, creating a more twitchy style of shooting that requires more prediction, and paying attention to what your opponent can do as well as what they are doing. Especially in Hunt's case, because this game takes this concept to the next level by making guns even slower and by making them deal insane amounts of damage for a good hit. Almost any gun in the game can two-shot to the body within a certain range. Tracking weapons like you'll find in almost any shooter these days just aren't the same. They're still very skillful, and in faster games like Slime Rancher, my favorite guns are the trackers, like the lightning gun, but they're more blunt. You simply see the enemy and fire where they are. It's a very simple approach to shooting. If you drop the track for a bit, you're usually fine because your weapon is often designed to have a lot of ammunition and allow for momentary lapses in aim. Hunt in Team Fortress 2, for the most part, however, were more about being aware with what your enemy is doing and will do. Tracking is still technically the best way to shoot, that's why all the hackers do it, but your brain, when you're actually playing the game, makes those decisions in the moment, meaning you have to be able to decipher how your opponent is going to move often right as they do it. If you don't, you'll miss your chance and have to cycle a new round. By making every gun the product of unpaid child labor coated in greasy mud, Hunt carries this same kind of gameplay into a battle royale free-for-all setting. Everything is extremely dangerous, and shooting matters a lot, cause you can't do as much of it, cause each gun requires you to fuck around with a metal lever somewhere to fire again, you can't miss as much, because every gun can kill in one to three shots, and that includes you, and ammunition is often in short supply, and reloading takes fucking forever. That Good lord, let him breathe! Yeah, I'll, I'll let you tap in in like a half hour when the mag's done. This all combines to make Hunt an extremely tense, high-skill game where aim and movement are paramount skills, but so are positioning, ammo conservation, reload timing, and utilization of your utility items to give you an advantage over the enemy. A lot of games do all of this, of course, position and usage of your tools is a part of almost every shooter on Earth, but Hunt executes this much like how the McDonald's Corporation executed JFK for eating at a Burger King one time in 1961. Hunt makes everything more exciting and more punishing because of its 
very high damage and huge opportunities for return fire if you miss. Almost every gun within a certain kind of medium range can one-shot with a headshot, which is often the range that you'll be fighting within. And obviously, since weapons are slow and take a long time to cycle compared to other games, it gives your opponent big chances to return fire if you happen to give them any room to breathe. It makes shooting and hunt not just unique, but extremely hardcore. You often end up positioning, firing a shot, and then repositioning immediately, or trying to switch to another gun at the expense of your own safety to finish off a kill. Gone are the days of just sitting still while shooting at every enemy, because you have like 40 bullets and it takes 9 to kill someone, so you just mag dump every enemy like they just admitted to having a beer in the car. You often find yourself making serious decisions about how long you remain in one position in Hunt, because one shot can be the deciding factor in a fight. You will frequently ask yourself what to do after taking a shot. Do you want to reposition, get a better angle, make yourself safer by sitting in a new spot the enemy doesn't know as much about, or be aggressive, try to pull out your sidearm, approach the enemy and go for a kill. Did you get a hit? Do you need to heal? Do you need to deal with poison or bleeding? Do you need to hit your vape because it's been four minutes and you're seeing demons? These are important moment-to-moment -moment decisions you need to make in Hunt. The high damage of the game, almost universally for all guns except for this German piece of shit, make it so hiding is insanely important in Hunt. You can't move fast, even though moving your head is still a big deal, but much of your defense is not dodging bullets, but avoiding being seen altogether. This is also what makes the aiming in Hunt important. Hunt divides players into different sections. Torso, legs, arms, groin, specifically the left nut or clitoris depending on your character, and head. As I said earlier, many weapons kill in two shots to the body, but not two shots to anywhere else except for the head. So you have to make sure that you're hitting your opponents in the right spots, or you will bring dishonor to your family and you'll be forced to live in the woods. Having to account for things like distance, the muzzle velocity of your weapon, sway, and what parts of the enemy that you're hitting make shooting in Hunt very interesting. Positioning in Hunt is extremely important, because the best ways to avoid being shot is either to put stuff in between you and the shooter, like a nice plump senator, or to not be seen at all. Movement helps, but you're often too slow for it to really save you in a bind. You don't want to be like this guy. It's this way. Very close. Down! Nice. Being out in the open is simply not going to work out for you like it might in other games. You simply don't have the health or the speed to compensate for how dangerous it is and how easy it becomes for your opponents to just shoot you. You're going to spend lots of time behind cover if you wish to not get shot. This causes the cycle of decision making in Hunt. Try to position yourself for a good shot, then decide where you want to be to follow up based on the situation, while also deciding what to do with your new position. Because guns are so slow, you almost take turns with your opponent to shoot. You fire, then because you can't shoot while you cycle, they fire and so on. But unlike real turn-based games, I don't fall asleep playing Hunt because my off turns are spent avoiding bullets, utilizing my items, and analyzing the situation me and my enemies are in. This makes every action a serious choice, since it could leave you vulnerable, or allow you to swing a fight back in your favor. You're you're never really out of the fight in Hunt unless your last man is down or the Lich has returned and demands your soul. There is always a hypothetical world where you simply headshot three enemies in a row and take the entire fight regardless of how much health you have. Sort of like Valorant or CSGO. You simply can just aim better than the enemy no matter how hard it is to actually pull off. This in turn makes it so Hunt almost plays like a weird multiplayer stealth game where the element of surprise and being able to take down one enemy with one shot before another squad even knows what's going on is always the preferred opening. Stealth is the real deal in Hunt. If your enemies don't know where you are, you have all the more opportunity to strike while they can't retaliate. At least until you're right on top of somebody because you positioned yourself very well and then you aim literally right on their fucking head but because Finnish people don't know how computers work, all your shots miss. Hunt takes this stealth very seriously. There are a huge number of different things that make loud noises which can betray your position if you're not slowly crouch walking through them. You'll have to avoid things like dangling chains, breakable twigs, crashed UFOs, and the fish. Once again accurate to the setting, the American South is coated in discarded beer cans and broken glass. Avoiding these noisemakers is a major part of your routing through the map and certain buildings, and plays well into making the stealth deeper. Hunt also has pretty good sound design. Sounds are distinct, well mixed, and you can tell everything that's happening just from listening to it given you aren't in a huge gunfight with lots of shots going off. That, uh, hold on, hold on. That call out may be a negative. Did someone just stab something? Nope, that's, uh, yep. Right There's behind us. Off. Literally right in front of me. Down one. Across the way from me. Over here. Hit him. Hit one. Down. One down. Last guy behind this, this, uh, dead. Coming, I'm coming. Okay, what just happened? 
Normally I don't talk about sound design, but given how important sound is to Hunt Showdown, I think it's important. You can pretty much always understand the game state through sound alone, and many items in the game, as stated, create a lot of noise, which can be used to identify an enemy or disguise your own sounds. It's an important part of any balanced breakfast, and it's done well here, which is good. There's also a lot of red herrings in Hunt. Zombies, for example, can pass through or interact with various noisemakers exactly as players do. Some enemies have sounds that sound vaguely like other objects if you're not paying attention, and sometimes the game just makes noises to try to scare you. Basically, it's a constant game of who can see what, a cat and mouse chase around compounds, and good old fashioned aiming. It's great. Now all of this aside, we have an important question to ask ourselves. What theme do you guys think I should go for for my new novelty restaurant? I'm thinking either r slash D&D or the Underground Railroad. But yes, the weapons. Those things we always talk about on YouTube. I mean, those are what make Hunt Hunt, right? Well, yes, that's true, you little bottom feeders. If Hunt didn't have the weapons it has, it would just be a game about punching zombies with knives, and frankly, you're just not gonna beat Dead Rising 2 at that. And that's sad because Dead Rising 2 didn't even beat Dead Rising 1. Weapons in Hunt are the bread and butter of the game. Without them, we would have nothing to obsessively critique the realism of in our game about shooting mutant zombie spiders. Again, as a whole, weapon design in Hunt has a few key features that make it interesting and fun to interact with. Slow cycle rates and slow reloads mainly contribute to making it so every shot counts, and accuracy is paramount. It creates these tense moments of vulnerability and makes the game fun. You live or die by the sword in Hunt, and the sword is a Winchester. And sometimes it's a sword. There are quite a few weapons in the game, and they have mostly subtle differences, with some having very defining unique strengths and weaknesses. What ammo a weapon uses, its magazine capacity, its sight pick how much damage it does to a passing door dasher, the available special ammo you can load into it. These are some of the things that define weapons in Hunt, and there are a multitude of factors that give each weapon its identity. For example, let's analyze the major differences between the Winfield lever action and the LaBelle 1886 bolt action rifle. Alright, so first off... Wait, did you just tab me out so that you could look at porn? What the fuck? The Winfield uses compact ammo, which has limited material penetration and damage at range, versus the LaBelle, which uses long ammo and has extremely high effective range and very good penetration. The Winfield, by virtue of using compact ammo, shares an ammo type with many different sidearms, allowing you to double up on ammo and increase your reserves and how much you get from looted ammunition boxes. Most pistols use compact ammo, so the LaBelle, by comparison, can only share ammo with these three pistols and no more. The Winfield also just starts off with more reserve ammo, so it's less reliant on keeping a same type sidearm. The LaBelle only comes with five additional shots, which isn't even a full magazine, meaning you're going to have to find a lot of ammo, or you're going to have to take one of those three pistols to increase your reserves. The LaBelle only has two variants. W uh, weapons in Hunt have variants, some with scopes or bayonets, stuff like that, and the LaBelle only has three variants, a melee damage variant, a sort of DMR variant, and then a proper scoped marksman variant. The Winfield, by comparison, has far more variants, being one of the most versatile weapons in the entire game. If you need it done, the Winfield can do it, and cheaply. At a distance, the Winfield also has a unique noise when fired. The Winfield also has a whopping 15 plus 1 rounds in the magazine. The LaBelle only has 10, which is still really good, but is decidedly fewer. The sights for both of these guns are also very different, with the LaBelles being some of the weirder ones in the game, but this is ultimately down to preference. The LaBelle also has vastly improved muzzle velocity, meaning you don't have to compensate as much for movement or distance because your bullets are just faster. These two guns also have different special ammunition available to them. The only way in which these two weapons are identical is that they both take three out of your four equipment slots to take. However, the Winfield has sawn down variants that only take up two of these slots at the cost of some of its effectiveness. These various subtleties and differences will have you asking if NASA is lying about the moon not being made of cheese because it looks pretty yellow to me, but also asking a lot of questions about the loadout you want to take into the bayou. Now, while all of this is cool and there's quite the learning curve to knowing how to make a good loadout without just defaulting to what everybody else does, there are times where guns and hunt could maybe use more obvious differentiation. Again, I hate to bring it up, but one of the best things Team Fortress 2 does does that I almost never see in another game is how clearly unique many of its weapons are. Team Fortress 2 doesn't deal with minor differences in fire rate or effective ranges or anything like that. It has extremely defined identities and unique mechanics for most of its weapons. It's the kind of experimentation we don't get from the robots that generate new Battlefield games, and also the reason I'm enjoying Hunt, because Hunt, just by its very nature, is doing the same thing. Hunt Showdown is effectively counterculture for what FPS games have been doing for a long time just by having the weapons that it has. 
was. Not to mention Crytek's staunch and respectable stance to only sell your data to the Russians, instead of the Russians and Gerald. And of course, even within the arsenal, Hunt does do this. One of the most recent additions was the Drilling Rifle, named after the fact that it constantly plays the worst drill music on Earth when you hold it, please fucking help me. And this weapon is a rather special gun that is both a medium range rifle with a limited capacity, and also a shotgun at the same time, fulfilling two roles at once. However, even this gun, which is fairly distinct, shares a similar function to the Lamat Carbine, a 9-shot compact ammo rifle which also features an underslung shotgun. So while these are very different, there's a lot of times where Gun and Hunt has an analog that, in many ways, can be kind of the same thing once you get into the practicality of it. Many guns in this game kill in two shots, like I said, and to a degree, it can be easy to just use whatever gun, cause it's about as good as a few other guns. Especially when many of your fights happen at a closer range. Now that being said, Guns and Hunt Showdown are like Far Cry games, there's often enough differences to make them feel like they play very differently, even if they basically don't in practice. And that is a huge deal. There's just enough to separate guns to make many of them feel like you want them for whatever specific reason, even if the situations where that reason would be good don't really come up in a match. This is something I never really loved about Apex. Every gun in Apex outside of the major weapon types was kind of the same, especially the SMGs and assault rifles. Obviously in a game like that, where weapons are found randomly and not purchased or equipped beforehand, guns have to be balanced. You can't give certain teams an advantage just because, except for all of the advantages they give just because, but Apex took this almost too far and eventually got to the point where new guns were almost outright better than, or were nearly identical to, existing ones. Like when the car released and was theoretically just better than the R99 by a tiny little pubic hair. Or when the flatline was nerfed and remains basically interchangeable with the R301. Some guns still kinda stood out in design, but not by much, and many of these guns weren't necessarily desirable. It's an unfortunate phenomenon, but an understandable one. Sadly, in my time with Apex, it never really got over this or the cigarettes, and they just stopped adding new weapons, and the last two they added were designed around gimmicks, before they realized they can make more money by turning the game into an online teenage fashion store instead. <sighs> Give me back Titanfall right fucking now. Holy shit, they listen! Hunt, luckily, is not like this. The ability to purchase guns for in-game currency means that guns can be wildly unbalanced, and often are. And while that sounds like a bad thing, to a degree it's not. Games only need to be balanced enough. There is such a thing as too balanced, and luckily Hunt hasn't reached that point. With as many small differentiators as weapons have, it makes it so that most guns at least have enough to trick you into thinking that your favorite streamer loves you and just you, and also that guns are substantially different when, in the heat of the moment, you may not even see some of the benefits you chose a weapon for. It's between a situational illusion and a situational reality. There are differences, they do matter, but you might not really feel them in a game except for maybe magazine capacity, effective range, and damage depending on what happens. Guns are situationally different, and there's a lot of cases where those situations just don't come up. Except for shotguns, they fucking suck. Still, it's far better than 10 different assault rifles that are all basically the same gun, except for some very minor differences with one clear winner. The universal strength of the weapons does serve one very positive purpose though, making it so that even the cheapest of loadouts or guns only available to new players can still be effective. This of course won't solve flooding caused by climate change, but it does make it so that even your otherwise unremarkable Winfields and Vetterlies can still put up a great fight. It also means that even at your poorest, you can probably afford a meaningful weapon, and your friends who are newer to the game can also do something extremely effective just by hitting an enemy. Finally, let's talk about PvE. Hunt has a major PvE component. PvE enemies function not just as something to do while you walk around a dilapidated moonshine distillery, but also serve as traps to try and get you to betray your position. Many of the enemies in the game have specific defenses with only one major weak point, unless you shoot them. Obviously, shooting an enemy will make a lot of noise, and anybody nearby will know where you are, so that isn't great. That means it's gonna be easier for your weird uncle to find you and tell you to invest in the Vietnamese Dong. So the best way to deal with these enemies is either a silenced weapon or melee. This should make it so you have an interesting decision on what equipment you take, making it so you have methods to deal with any NPCs that get in your way. But then Crytek added a melee weapon that deals with all of them so it doesn't matter. Thanks, Finland! Now the upside is that Hunt allows you to frequently stab wounded horses and make them pay for what they did to us, but the knuckle knife, which as its name suggests, deals both blunt and stabbing damage, 
is honestly kind of nonsense. This knife takes what otherwise should be a legitimate consideration of loadout construction, and instead turns dealing with NPCs into an annoying chore. As a YouTuber, I'm trying to avoid doing chores or work, like showering or having a real job, so this is extremely obnoxious to me. What doesn't help is that there are a ridiculous number of the special enemies that are supposed to be resistant to certain kinds of damage in every location, to the point where dealing with them becomes tedious, even with the knuckle knife. It simply isn't fun dealing with like five special noise traps before you find a clue a quarter of a way into an area. There's even times where so-called special enemies are packed so densely that multiple of them appear in the same exact location. Luckily, bosses, the main objective in Hunt, you have to fight bosses in this game, start writing that down, still often require dedicated tools to bring them down. So this consideration still survives a bit, it's just weird that this wasn't also applied to the special enemies. There's this weird situation where special enemies are so oversaturated and easy to deal with that it makes them not really special at all. And once you figure out how to deal with them, they have literally no chance of ever actually utilizing their various special attacks. Like look at this guy, this is supposed to be one of the most dangerous enemies in the entire game and he's getting pushed around like that homeless guy I Because they're so numerous and so trivial, the few times where they do actually matter, it feels incredibly annoying. Now, I don't think that enemies should become incredibly powerful or anything, and if they did, they would have to be avoidable, but I do think that they should be more significant and less numerous. Having to traverse a location with an actually important enemy somewhere around it is far more interesting than just having to smack through five trivial enemies that can be killed in one shot. I should know I worked at a daycare for three years. Now, there is one elephant in the room. Oh fuck, there's two, run. Let's talk about the major problems that Hunt has just for the sake of transparency. Even though I didn't make this game, and I don't benefit from it financially or really at all, so it doesn't matter if I'm transparent. First off, Hunt Showdown is extremely frustrating. It's effectively a battle royale slash extraction shooter, whatever, where you could die in just one hit. It's a very annoying game. Hunt is very punishing, it leaves very little room for mistakes. This is what makes it interesting for me personally, because the game is so punishing, I constantly have to improve and adapt. If you lost, there's always something you could have done a little bit better, which is a lot of fun. But also, as a consequence, there are going to be times where stuff is just frustrating, especially in the moment. So, if you plan on playing the game, I recommend you make some friends. Now, obviously, considering it's all of you guys, you're going to also want to watch my guide on how to make friends. Another major problem with Hunt is map geometry. For the most part, navigating the map is fine, and there's no issues. However, because this is a Crytek game, and Crytek needs to make all of their games look as good as possible, regardless of what it costs, the geometry in Hunt Showdown is extremely complex, and with it comes a lot of weird Weirdness. I'm not sure if it's something to do with the shape of the player's actual collision, or something to do with the tick rate, or whatever, but for some reason you will bound around like a fucking bouncy ball in this game if you happen to enter into certain areas that you're not supposed to or can't fit in. There's a lot of instances where geometry looks like something you should be able to just walk on, but because it's too thin, or it's shaped kind of weirdly, your character will slide around or bounce off of them. It's extremely annoying, and personally I would much rather have a worse looking game if it meant that the surfaces that I could walk on would at least allow me to consistently walk on them, or if what I could or could not stand on was more clearly defined. Now this does mean that there's a lot of interesting little spots that you can take up, but also when you're in a fight it's incredibly annoying to try to take a position and then to just slide right off of it. In a game where one shot can be the deciding factor in an entire match, losing to stupid bullshit like this is incredibly frustrating. Like this game is hard enough, it doesn't need you rubber banding off of a rock. Now, aside from this and the fact that the moon will scream at you if you look at it, the map is pretty good. This is, however, a relatively problematic issue. It won't happen all of the time. Many of the compounds and the routes that you're going to take are designed in a way where what you should be walking on is relatively safe. But times where this weirdness does happen are just a really big eye roller. I'm sliding off this roof for no reason. And finally, the netcode and hit detection. Now, by the admission of Crytek and the NATO War Crimes Council, Hunt Showdown's hit detection is not exactly where they want it to be. And they say that they plan on fixing a lot of the issues they have with it in an upcoming update. So if this sounds like a deal breaker for you, maybe just keep paying attention for a while, but while Hunt Showdown's netcode is perfectly fine for most games, at least in my experience, there are some isolated instances where I kinda just scratch my head at exactly how something happened. Like this clip from this very video. How? And of course, there are some other smaller issues. The performance on PC is not always amazing, even if you have a really powerful rig, the price of the game is way too high, and the matchmaking is not necessarily bad, but it is questionable. But this is stuff that's a problem in a lot of games, sadly. And aside from this, that's really it. But it is really fun in a way that forces you to genuinely slow down. 
You need to learn patience, tact, consideration for your loadout and your approach, and what to do when shit hits the fan. Sit back, eat some grass, relax a little while keeping a highly paranoid vigilance over every bush and rock because your enemies or a dream fangirl could be behind any of them. Hunt is a game of spikes, there's lulls of relatively calm routing and NPC killing, and then massively intense shootouts with other players. But ultimately, is Hunt Showdown worth playing? Yes, in my opinion. It's intense, it's gripping, it's fun. If you enjoy slower, more punishing games or goopy foot jobs, you'll love Hunt Showdown. That being said, I certainly wouldn't pay $40 for it unless $40 isn't much to you, so I would wait for a sale. But it does kick a lot of ass, and it's worth playing. But yeah, that's pretty much all for me. Thank you very much for watching. I know that this was a departure from our normal affair, but don't worry, there's still more Team Fortress 2 related stuff in the future. So as long as the bear doesn't get out, I will see you guys next time. And once again, thank you very much for watching. Peace.